Ireland at the moment um, is preparing for dairy expansion, is preparing for post quota where there's market prices and volatility. Um, there's a dairy conference, a very important dairy conference in Europe next week where, where they will be discussing compulsory insurance schemes for dairy farmers. Is that something that the department and you are worried about? Are you, is it another Y2K? Is it um, in terms of price volatility? Because we're Ireland, in effect, yeah. along with Europe, <coughs> is entering the unknown. Um, are you concerned and will the department have safeguards in place for dairy farmers? I'm more excited than I am concerned, but of course we have to plan for this. You know, I mean, um, what is not going to happen is that we are going to reach a point where quotas end overnight and Ireland hasn't prepared for that or Europe hasn't prepared for that. Uh, and we have been preparing for the last two years. Uh, we've been working with farmers, farming organisations, um, farm consultancy organisations, with Chagask, uh, uh, with the co-ops uh, and with the industry generally to plan for how we are going to manage a significant growth in, in dairy volume uh, that's going to happen after 2015. We'll probably get a 15% increase in dairy output uh, perhaps even in the first 12 months if we get good weather. Um, and so you're not worried, you're not concerned? No, like, no, like, okay. uh, no so, so just to reassure people, right? this is not going to happen by accident. Uh, we are managing um, the situation and we're planning for it. But that involves changing a number of things. First of all, in terms of price volatility, uh, I do think we need to look at longer term pricing contracts between farmers and their co-ops. Um, a lot of farmers are nervous of that because you know, in a, in a good year, they may not get paid what they otherwise would have if mm -hmm. they'd agreed a price 12 months earlier. But of course, the upside is that in a bad year, if there were to be a price collapse, they are protected from that. And certainly, uh, in the years 2015 and, and 2016, when we are coming out of a managed quota situation into a more free market um, approach towards dairy production, it makes a lot of sense, in my view, for farmers to sign up with their co-ops for long-term pricing co uh, contracts for 40 or 50 or 60 percent of the milk that they're going to be supplying for them. And I think there's an appetite within the co-ops to also do that. So we are looking at ways in, in which we can anticipate price volatility and try to insulate or ensure um, Irish farmers against that. And there are ways in which we can do that. But I think the other thing that people need to realise is that if you look at the markets, the dairy markets that we're exploring at the moment, in a few weeks' time, um, I'm going to Saudi Arabia, to Qatar, to the UAE, to Dubai. Uh, all of those countries are, are interested in actually sourcing Irish dairy product. We were in China last year. Um, uh, my Chinese counterpart, counterpart has said to me, look, volume isn't the problem. We'll take as much milk powder as you can give us. The issue is around quality and price. Um, so uh, we do think that, that we can find new markets outside of the European Union predominantly for the extra milk that Irish farmers will produce. But of course, we have to prepare for that, put the contracts and relationships and partnerships in place between our big co-ops, uh, our, our big dairy companies and, and partners uh, predominantly outside of the European Union. Okay. All of that is underway. The conference next week, I think, is because there are a number of countries that aren't as confident about that expansion process as Ireland France. is. Yeah. Um, countries like France, but in particular, uh, newer member states within the European Union, uh, countries like Poland, who might have an average farms, uh, our, our average dairy herd size of three or four animals. Uh, and so they're in a very different place in terms of a developed dairy industry. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we do need to have uh, safety nets, uh, market tools that we can use and introduce at a European level if there is a price collapse. But those tools should not include supply controls, and we've made it very, very clear on that.